Orbital, where two spacewalkers, Russian cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, are currently inside. The hatch is still closed. Both cosmonauts have entered into their Orlan spacesuits and are in the process of depressurizing the area inside of Poisk. Um, so they're going to continue to bring that down all the way just to about vacuum before they open up the hatch and begin the spacewalk. I'm NASA's Dan Hewitt, and I will be taking you through everything over the next several hours today. This is the second spacewalk in just about a week to continue the outfitting and preparation of the Russian Naoka uh, Multipurpose Laboratory Module, or MLM, uh, the recently attached module to the Russian segment on the space station. Uh, there will be quite a few tasks today to get through, uh, some that were deferred from the spacewalk last week, um, including uh, finishing uh, the connection of an Ethernet or a data cable. Um, so just running through all of our tasks today. Uh, they're going to continue finishing connecting that data cable that will link the U.S. segment and the MLM. Uh, that's going to be used as a redundant path for any payloads uh, housed in or on MLM in the future. Also providing a redundant path uh, for controlling the European robotic arm or the ERA on MLM that arrived uh, to service the Russian segment with the new module. Uh, they're also going to be redirecting an external monitoring unit. Um, it's uh, mainly used for uh, inspecting any plume impingement. All of the primary thrusters on the space station are located on the Russian segment. And as you use propellant in space, it does have the potential to leave a residue or um, interact with the surfaces on the outside of the station. So this is just a monitoring unit already installed that they're going to reorient for future uh, any operations. They have a number of bridge handrails, uh, essentially gap spanners, you may hear them called. Uh, these are just handrails that will be installed along the outside of the MLM uh, to assist in translation or just moving around during future spacewalks at launch without these handrails. And now they're being installed just to uh, assist in uh, any future spacewalks by these cosmonauts. Again, we, we're going to have about a dozen, uh, just shy of a dozen total, to do all of the outfitting of uh, the MLM module. Um, and so this will assist in all their future endeavors. They're going to be routing a number of cables today. So the, that first one, that Ethernet cable, um, they're also going to be connecting uh, some cables for the TV system uh, between the Russian service modules, Vesta and MLM, uh, to integrate their two TV, their video systems. Uh, they'll also be routing and connecting a cable between the cores units. So the cores is used for the automated rendezvous and docking of the Russian Progress spacecraft, the cargo craft. Uh, they'll be connecting a cable between uh, the service module and uh, the MLM uh, to um, to integrate the two, and that will uh, assist in uh, the handoff that happens during the final approach of those progress vehicles, as we'll be using MLM as a docking uh, target in the not too distant future. Uh, aside from that, they're also going to be installing a platform with some adapters on the outside of uh, the MLM that will be able to host any payloads in the future. Um, so that'll be one of the final tasks. Also, uh, one of the tasks that was deferred from last week, installing the BioRisk biological specimen containers outside of the Poisk module. These will be three containers that contain different samples that's exposing them to the vacuum of outer space um, to just determine their, um, their feasibility in that really harsh environment. Uh, the BioRisk also looking at things uh, like potential contamination and we'll go through the study a little bit later. Um, and then one final task, again, time permitting, they'll just take survey photos of the Russian segment in the exterior. Uh, we'll see them taking photos quite a bit throughout the day as they continue to attach all of these cables, uh, usually taking photos of the final attachment point. And those all get shared with engineers down on the ground for a final review to make sure everything looks good. And we'll have a couple of connectivity tests throughout the day of the spacewalk as well. Um, as they get all of these different cables attached. So all told, uh, spacewalk planned to last just shy of six and a half hours, six hours and 26 minutes uh, in the exact accounting. Again, that's just an estimate of everything. Uh, we'll be going off the schedule pretty quickly once we get moving. Uh, but today it'll be Oleg Novitsky again. He's going to be EV-1 or in the suit with red stripes on it. So he'll be easily identifiable by just looking for the stripes. 
uh, and then Piotr Dubrov will be EV2. This is the third spacewalk for each of these cosmonauts, uh, both previously completing two together, uh, with a total of 15 hours and 13 minutes already on their spacewalking resume. And we'll be getting the helmet cams once they get outside. And you'll see a small 22 uh, in the bottom corner of Novitsky's helmet cam and a small number 20 uh, in the bottom corner of Dubrov's. So once they get out the door, We'll begin to get those helmet cameras looking over their shoulders as they work in the vacuum of space for about six and a half hours. Copy. What's the MRM2 pressure for the manual pressure gauge, please? It's practically the same. It may have risen by about half a millimeter, but no more than that. Okay. We're going to wait another minute. Or so. Copy. So at this moment, Novitsky and Dubrov are still inside the Poisk module, inside their airlock. Uh, they've been moving pretty quickly through the timeline today, so both got into their Orlon spacesuits a couple of hours ago and then closed the hatches inside uh, to isolate that MRM2, that mini research module, to the Poisk module. Um, they were assisted in all of their suit up by NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei, uh, who's going to remain on board the, the Russian segment throughout the spacewalk. Um, once getting into their suits uh, and closing all the hatches, they began to, a gradual depress of the airlock, stopping at 550 millimeters of mercury, uh, which is about 10.6 psi. Copy, Alex. Uh, let's uh, prepare uh, cue card 7, step 11, Orlan transition to internal power. Um, please uh, stand by for my go to uh, start working on that step. Copy. Cue card is ready. Copy that, and we just got a go for you to start working on step 11 of key card 7. Copy, step 11. Temperature control handle uh, to position 6. 6 for both uh, EV1 and EV2. Verifying Orlan pressure is between 0 decimal 35 and 0 decimal 4. 0 decimal 37 uh, for both. Uh, turn off uh, primary uh, fan and primary uh, pump uh, and lights on the uh, 5M panel. Verify in primary. And again, right now, they've continued the depressurization of the Poisk module. Uh, they were able to bring it down to about 10.6 PSI a little bit earlier today, entering into what's known as a pre-breathe um, that taking place uh, just a little while ago at 1345 GMT. Uh, or just about 8.45 Central here in Houston. They completed that after about 30 minutes, that pre breed done to just kind of help purge all the excess nitrogen from their blood, as when they're in these suits, they're going to be breathing pure oxygen. Um, those familiar with U.S. spacewalks see the, the astronauts typically doing some light exercise. Um, the cosmonauts able to, to purge the nitrogen without going through that as their suits operate at a slightly higher pressure. Um, you, you're hearing them call out some numbers between 0.35 and 0.4, um, locking in at 0.37. That's measured in atmospheres, so 0.37 atmospheres. It's about 5.4 PSI, which is what they'll be uh, operating in throughout the spacewalk today. One and two. Power is off on the uh, uh, panel. Uh, we're both on internal power. Uh, demating electrical umbilical. That's complete for both suits. Copy. And sounding like their suits on internal power. Now for U.S. spacewalks, that will typically start the beginning, but uh, for Russian spacewalks, we mark the beginning of the EVA or the spacewalk once the hatch is open. 
Uh, so we're still a couple of minutes from that, uh, expecting it to open around 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, or 1500 GMT. MLI cover. We did hear a report that there was a good final leak check done on the POISC module, so everything progressing really smoothly so far today. Any shape or form. That's better. And then before we really dive into the spacewalk today, we did just want to uh, give an update for folks uh, that had heard about a smoke alarm inside the space station uh, last night. Uh, just before 10 p.m. Eastern time, a smoke alarm inside the Russian Zvezda service module did enunciate, uh, waking up the crew with the smoke alarm going off for about a minute. Um, the crew did report uh, burnt plastic or an electronics type smell in the Zvezda module. Uh, reported uh, the same but faint smell also in the U.S. areas in Node 1, which is connected directly to the Russian segment. Uh, no source was found, uh, but air filters were cr quickly replaced. Uh, the crew was able to go back to sleep and uh, all sides uh, of the smoke smell dissipated. So didn't impact any of our operations so far today. Uh, no impact to the crew themselves who are going throughout their normal day and this spacewalk proceeding normally. Uh, but we did just want to give that update before we really dive into today's spacewalk activities. We assess Orlan interface uh, unit. Uh, the um, O2 flow selector knob is in O2 closed position. Can you um, Peter, can you see if the blinkers are closed or not? It's kind of hard to see. But I think it, it looks closed. And this is better. I can confirm that O2 open is closed. Um, verifying uh, pressures. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, pressures in suits and um, pressures uh, in uh, primary oxygen tanks. Um, it's a zero decimal uh, thirty uh, six for EV one. And primary O2 tank uh, is showing 411 for EV1. For EV2, the pressure in the suit is um, sort of between 0 decimal 37 and 0 decimal 36. And primary O2 tank uh, pressure is 406. Copy all. Go ahead and uh, put the stowage cap on uh, both fluid umbilicals. Uh, Peter, if you'd like, I can help you. Yeah, because it's going to be hard to do uh, in this position. Uh, guys, um, uh, there's no need to rush. You can take your time. Um, you are ahead of schedule, so... Uh, uh, do uh, take your time uh, to do everything right. And again, we're continuing to hear the two cosmonauts, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, going through their final checks before they get ready to open the hatch and begin today's spacewalk. Again, they're in those Orlon spacesuits. They're giving out uh, pressure tank temp uh, pressure. Tank pressures, um, also reporting on the, the pressure levels of their suits, and they're going to be operating at right around uh, 5.4 to 5.7 PSI throughout the spacewalk. Uh, normal atmosphere pressure inside the station, and for those of us here on planet Earth, is about 14.7. Um, so working in a, a lower pressure environment just so they can still effectively move inside of their uh, spacesuits, which are in of themselves almost miniature spacecraft, uh, having 
uh, a backpack with uh, oxygen tanks, batteries, communications equipment, um, and uh, they are a pressure vessel. Uh, the Orlon's a little bit different from the large EMU spacesuits uh, that you're familiar with with U.S. spacewalks. Um, the Orlon is a one-piece suit, and it's entered in from the back almost through a hatchway, essentially, uh, with the uh, backpack swinging over. Uh, the backpack does have, um, again, all of that vital life support hardware, much like the EMU does. Um, one other difference is with the Orlon, the, uh, the helmet and the visor and the body are just a single metallic structure as opposed to multiple different pieces. Um, the arms and legs are uh, made from a softer material, obviously allowing them to, to maneuver around in the vacuum of space and in microgravity. Um, but then the, the crew also wearing uh, a liquid-cooled garment, very similar to ours, which uh, they're able to control with the temperature gauge on the suit, uh, either raising or lowering the cooling um, for them inside while they're working. But uh, at this moment, we've already gone through the final leak check on the poise module, so once the crew gets through these uh, additional suit checkouts, we'll be ready to open the hatch and begin today's spacewalk. Greetings, Artyom. And then once they head outside, uh, they'll get a protective ring installed and then uh, arrange their safety tethers um, before they pull some of the cable bundles out, turn on their helmet cams, and then move off to begin our task for today. Uh, one of the, the first primary tasks is going to be finishing uh, the mating or the connecting of an Ethernet cable that was routed on a previous spacewalk. Uh, and helping to integrate MLM uh, into the U.S. segment. Um, again, this Ethernet providing a redundant path for any future payloads hosted on the module, uh, and also a redundant path for the European robotic arm, which is going to be the, the primary manipulator over on the Russian segment now, uh, maneuvering payloads or potentially spacewalking astronauts in the future. Um, maybe just one, or we can just turn on both, I guess. Kind of blinding in the eyes, but uh, they're on. And this view is looking at what's going to be a lot of our work sites today. Um, Again, we expect the hatch to open up within the next 12 minutes or so. Uh, the target time was right around 10 a.m. Central, about 1,500 GMT. On, on both um, uh, Orlan suits. Copy. What about cameras? Cameras will come in later. Now we need to make sure that all of the uh, uh, items are secured and uh, will not fly out where they're not supposed to. Copy. Now, uh, verify that you are at, uh, ha you have at least one uh, tether point that you're hooked to inside the module. Copy. My father, this is Peter. Um, my both tethers are. Принято. Давление не более 15 миллиметров у нас сейчас вообще, да? My two uh, tethers are uh, secured uh, to a handrail, and uh, this is all like if you want. Um, uh, my both tethers are hooked to uh, handle uh, 6118. Copy. Um, can you confirm that uh, the pressure inside the, uh, the airlock is uh, less than uh, 15 millimeters? Uh, yes, it's uh, less than 15 millimeters. Copy. Then go ahead and um, uh, take out the uh, hatch opening uh, tool. Uh, it's out. Verify that uh, the marks match. Go ahead and um, 
insert the um, uh, hatch tool uh, to the um, into the uh, hatch drive motor shaft. Oleg, I think you're a little bit in my way. Just a tad. Or more specifically, it's it's uh, your back that's in my way. And so the crew reporting the pressure inside of Poise has continued to drop. We were looking for it to get to about 12 millimeters of mercury, or just about 0.2 uh, psi. Decal and the arrow on the hatch. Uh, rotate uh, the hatch tool all the way to open position. Copy. Rotating. Right now, um, we're in eclipse. Now, now pull uh, the push uh, hatch um, uh, sealing mechanism uh, a hatch tool all the way towards yourself to a hard stop. And um, uh, hold it like that until uh, we um, release all the remaining pressure. Uh, copy. Um, and Piotr, I uh, turned um, uh, towards you so I could uh, help you hold the handle. Uh, and there are some droplets, uh, particulates. Um, uh, that are uh, starting to flow towards uh, uh, the hatch. And I'm ready to continue uh, to open the hatch all the way. Here go. talking over each other. And the sublimators are not on yet. It's just that um, something um, squirted. Uh, maybe it was something that was remaining in the uh, fluid umbilical. Yes, don't uh, turn on sublimators uh, yet. Uh, that's going to come in uh, later. And I'm, re I'm ready to open uh, the EV hatch all the way. Uh, Peter, you go. Uh, you, you may do so. All right, and this is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we did get confirmation that the hatch on Poisk was opened. Uh, that hatch opening coming at 9.51 a.m. Central Time. 10.51 a.m. Eastern, 14.51 GMT, marking the official start of Russian spacewalk number 50 on board the International Space Station. Again, that time, the hatch on Poisk opened at 9.51 a.m. Central, 10.51 a.m. Eastern, 14.51 GMT. With the hatch now open, they're going to start making their way out to begin today's tasks. Uh, first up, uh, EV2, or Pyotr Dubrov, the cosmonaut wearing the suit with the blue stripes, is going to make his way out first, uh, fixing his safety tether uh, and moving outside of the airlock. 
Uh, following that, he'll work with uh, Nowitzki, who's EV1 in the suit with the red stripes, uh, to take a cable carrier with some of the cables that they're going to be routing and connecting today out of the airlock uh, before they turn on their helmet cameras, and then Nowitzki will make his way out for them to go on to their respective tasks. They're going to be splitting up pretty quickly once they get outside uh, with got the, um, a hook. This is all like, go ahead and uh, secure it to uh, handrail 201 and um, make sure you have uh, the right slack selected. That's complete. Copy. Now you may start to install the um, protective ring. Okay, uh, let's uh, turn it this way, Peter. And again, at this moment, the hatch is open and EVA 50 spacewalk number 50 in the Russian segment has officially begun. That hatch opening coming at 9.51 a.m. Central, 10.51 a.m. Eastern. This is um, not the most user-friendly design, I must say. But um, this is EV2 reporting. Uh, uh, the flag is up. And um, we can report that the uh, um, protective ring is installed. Can you do it a good pull test? Um, yeah, we pulled and tagged on it. Um, it's installed um, uh, stably. Uh, copy, Peter. Go ahead and egress um, after you um, uh, hook your safety tether to a tether point, and then uh, uh, follow the lead towards uh, the operator post. And we heard the space walkers confirm the protective ring around the hatchway into the poise module is installed. So now Pyotr Dubrov is going to be start uh, is going to start making his way out of the airlock. Adjustable tether is secured on handrail 6226. Copy that. Uh, now go ahead and um, take out. Um, uh, your adjustable uh, tether. And we expect it to take about 20 minutes for both crew members to get out and get their safety tethers uh, arranged while also bringing out the, the large uh, bundle of cables that they're going to be routing out of the airlock and then turning on their helmet cams uh, that will be looking over their shoulders on. And as we can see... And um, guys, um, Oleg and Peter, uh, just uh, a little bit of warning for you. In about 10 minutes, we'll be going into insulation. And um, in about 10 minutes, which is uh, right about that time, uh, we'll have uh, an expected uh, five-minute LOS. Just uh, be forewarned. Copy. Thank you for letting us know. Now, Peter, we just got to go from the specialist to activate your sublimators. And um, you guys both are also uh, go um, to take out the UKP cable carrier with SMMLM1 and SMMLM2 cable bundles out of the MRM2. Copy. This is Oleg. Uh, I just secured uh, the tether, 
and uh, Fyodor uh, reporting that he's uh, working on turning on his sublimator. And uh, Oleg, you are going to turn on your sublimator as well. And uh, that's complete. And a number of items as the crew continues to make their way outside of the hatchway. So Pyotr Dubrov in the suit with the blue stripes already outside. Uh, the crew did get a heads up that we're going to have a short LOS, a loss of signal uh, coming up uh, in about eight minutes from now. Uh, we will have almost constant uh, video and audio communications with the crew as during a spacewalk we're in what's known as TDRS critical. Um, this is when we get priority access to the tracking and data relay satellites that we use to send video and audio to and from the space station. Uh, we will have occasional uh, dropouts either due to what's known as blockage. So there's those antennas pointing uh, at the satellites with some piece of the station in the way um, or occasional handovers uh, as the antennas point between the different satellites in geosynchronous orbit. So we will have a couple of minutes uh, coming up where we'll lose that video communication, uh, but we'll get it back pretty quickly. Uh, meanwhile, the crew getting told to turn on their sublimators. Um, those just uh, rely on physics to help cool the water that's gonna be circulating inside of their suit, which again, they can control with the temperature uh, controller on their on their spacesuits to help keep them cool during the spacewalk. So turning those on, uh, also getting out two cable bundles with SMMLM1 or the service module MLM1 bundle uh, and also bundle number two. Um, so with Nowitzki still in the airlock, he's going to hand those outside uh, to Dubrov, who's going to then secure them um, onto a handrail temporarily. Uh, then once both crew members make their way out, they'll turn on those helmet cams. Uh, again, making sure that they have their safety tethers in place first, as the crew members will always be tethered to the station at all times during the spacewalk. And then after that, they'll be able to start moving out to begin uh, all of their initial tasks. Again, uh, one of the first ones we're gonna tackle is the uh, is to finish mating and the ethernet cable, a data cable that was routed during a previous spacewalk uh, to help integrate the, the US segment uh, of the station with the newly arrived MLM. Uh, that'll be a redundant path uh, providing uh, data for any future payloads and also a redundant data path for the European robotic arm. So in this diagram, you can see the, the Ethernet cable connector plate. They're going to be moving down there uh, to install that uh, and integrate MLM additionally. We'll have another patch cable that'll run between uh, the, the new laboratory module and the service module, and that'll get installed a little bit later on today's spacewalk. Again, this is just one of uh, almost a dozen spacewalks that are planned to continue to integrate MLM into the station and prepare for all of its operations. They were able uh, during the spacewalk last week uh, to successfully connect all of the power uh, that's going to integrate MLM into the station's power system. Um, previously, it was being powered by some temporary feeds from the service module, um, but now with these in place, uh, they'll be able to access uh, the electrical uh, power generated by the station's large solar arrays, um, with that being fed directly to their systems. Um, so that was done successfully. I still have a couple of data uh, cable tasks for this one, and also going to be integrating today uh, some of the TV, the video systems between MLM and the Russian service module, uh, along with the uh, the core's automated rendezvous antennas, uh, those used for the Progress spacecraft as they come up and dock to the space station automatically. Um, they, uh, an active system on the progress, uh, basically talks to a passive system on board the station. Uh, the cable is going to tie the MLM and the, the service module systems together uh, for visiting vehicles that are that are heading up um, to the multi-purpose laboratory um, or the future uh, Russian node module uh, that's scheduled to slate uh, that's slated to arrive a little bit later this year. And that way they'll be able to use uh, the core system inside the service module up until uh, they get to what's called station keeping. So just before the final approaches, uh, and then they'll hand over to the, the core's antennas on board MLM. But meanwhile, back at our spacewalk, it now looks like uh, Oleg Nowitzki making his way out. So with both outside, we'll now uh, stand by and hopefully get those helmet cameras in the not too distant future. We'll be able to bring you in to look over their shoulders as they work. 
in, in there. And again, now outside, the crew members are going to be splitting up um, to, to go off and start their respective tasks. All right, Gennady, could you repeat your ask? Nowitzki's going to install the cable carrier for all of the, uh, the cables that they're going to be routing on a handrail. Um, and then turn on the IS there in the middle position. Yes, it's in the middle position. Okay, V1, V2 as well uh, has the uh, cold uh, hot control, control in the middle position. Yes, I see the arrow. I am turning it in the direction of the flywheel. Copy. Actually, in about a minute and a half, there will be an LOS. It's an, ex it's an expected one. Alex Peter, uh, cold, hot, candle. Mm. Notable. Anyone is on one. Notable. Cable bundle uh, is on the translational handrail 303. Yeah, it will be is it uh, okay if I secure it for tightness by hand? Yes, that will be sufficient. Copy. Oleg, if it's not too much trouble, uh, could you uh, move the crew log bag uh, with the translational handrails to Peter, uh, bring it to Peter? Okay. As far as I understand, I need to free up the uh, tether from the bundle. Okay. Yes, that is exactly the case. So you can secure the uh, tether either on the okape handle or on the translational handrail, but put, uh, secure both the hooks on that handrail. Peter, uh, did you rotate Bacadillo? Yes, I rotated Bacadillo. Copy. And then translate to handrail 6038, and in about a minute, we're going to have sunrise. Copy. I secured one uh, tether. Yes, and um, maneuver the crew look back out. You can put it on the translational handrail, and Peter is going to take it when he starts translating on Strela. We're going to have an LOS, as I mentioned previously, all it after you uh, maneuver the crew back out. Translate to the Ethernet uh, reel. Okay, over the operator post. Yes, over the operator post. And Peter, you perform the photography of the two antennas of the cargo vehicle. And we're going to be uh, look, uh, looking forward to your photography, uh, photographs, and your reports. So there are several payloads here. So we will come back, take a look. So my visual inspection, uh, there, there's no damage on the antenna and the reflector. Uh, as soon as uh, the sunrise. After the sunrise, I can give more details. So on the right side, copy, copy, Peter. Uh, very large, interfer major interference. I confirm. I confirm the calm is getting worse. Antenna on the right side. No damage. Copy. 
And as mentioned previously, we're in that gap now where we're going to lose video communication with the station for a couple of minutes. We'll look to pick that up uh, within the next five minutes. For now, though, both crew members, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, outside of the Poisk module, already moving off into their first task. Uh, Novitsky, EV-1, he's in the suit with the red stripes. Um, right now is securing a cable carrier with some of the different cables that they're going to be routing and connecting today on a handrail. Uh, meanwhile, Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2, in the suit with the blue stripes, uh, is taking some photos of the currently docked uh, Progress MS-17 um, or the 78P Progress vehicle. Um, he's taking pictures of a couple of the antennas. Um, they'll be taking photos of quite a bit of their work today. All of this just gets sent back down to teams on the ground for additional review. Uh, once they're done with these initial tasks, uh, they're immediately going to jump in um, to routing the Ethernet cable, the data cable, to help integrate, uh, further integrate the multi-purpose laboratory module with the U.S. segment of the station. Uh, low light. The sun is shining from the other side. Okay, copy. We will be standing by for now until the sun rises a little bit. So I secured this with the hook and with adjustable tether. Copy, Alex. And getting our first views from the helmet cameras. Uh, this one. I activated the camera. Copy. Taking photographs. We're still having the, the spotty connection with our video. We'll look for that to lock up solidly in the next couple of minutes, but getting the first views from the helmet cameras. Um, it looks like we did have a bit of an audible with the numbers, um, and you're going to see the number 20 um, in the bottom right corner of the helmet cam on Oleg Novitsky. He's wearing the spacesuit with the red stripes in his EV-1 today. Uh, and then Pyotr Dubrov, uh, we'll look for his helmet camera. That'll have the number 22 in the bottom corner. Of the uh, cargo vehicle antennas. Okay. Thank you. But as of right now, we're already 22 minutes and counting up into today's spacewalk, which did begin at 9.51 a.m. Central, 10.51 a.m. Eastern. Um, as they open the, the hatch on the poise module and started making their way outside, uh, both crew members already outside. The helmet camera is powered up, and once we get video back, we should be able to start looking over their shoulders. Um, already moving into their first task, uh, Pyotr Dubrov working to take some photos of antennas on the Progress spacecraft, currently docked to the station, uh, while Oleg Novitsky finishes uh, securing a, a cable carrier on one of the handrails just outside of Poise before he moves over to start uh, getting the, uh, the cable reel of that uh, Ethernet data cable that's going to connect um, the U.S. segment with the new lab multipurpose laboratory module. And then getting our video back again, you can tell this is Novitsky by the red stripe that you can see on his spacesuit is EV-1 today.
I have approached antennas uh, quite closely, copy. And the LED is blinking on glister, and you are recording. Yes, the, LED, the red LED is blinking, uh, and actually has been blinking. So can I take uh, videos, the imagery from here? Yes, uh, you can. Yes, exactly from this particular distance. Uh, we need that as a backup. Okay, copy. I'll do it. Let me secure myself in a more comfortable position. Copy. And right now we're continuing to look over the shoulder of EV-1 today. Uh, it's Oleg Novitsky. The team's working to also get the uh, helmet cam activated for Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2. We did get a quick glimpse at him. Uh, right now we can see uh, Novitsky stationed right at the top of the, the Strela arm, uh, which has been used previously to help uh, maneuver cosmonauts and also payloads around during spacewalks. I'll go get the crew of bed, and um, then I'm going to go to install the handrail. Okay, YouTube. Uh, videos of both antennas from as close as possible, uh, and from mid-range, yes, as close as I could get to, uh, and as far as, as close as I could get to the antennas, I secured my tether to 6038, and I got as close as possible to the um, uh, as close as possible to the antennas. Okay, and also then go to uh, the translation handrail. Yeah, Oleg already has the bundle for you. Okay, thank you, Oleg. So I'm going to secure it now to Peter and to the respector. Okay, thank you, Oleg. You can turn the camera off. Make sure the LED is no longer blinking. No longer on, and go to the uh, and go get the Ethernet bundle, Ethernet cable bundle. Okay, copy. And now another short handover before we get that video back. So again, both crew members outside. Uh, finishing up a couple of quick photo tasks um, over on that currently docked progress cargo craft. Uh, they're going to start moving out now to secure a couple of different cable bundles. Um, EV-1, Oleg Novitsky in the, the suit with the red stripes is going to be moving to um, release and then begin routing an Ethernet cable uh, that was previously put in place on a Russian spacewalk. Uh, this is a data cable that, again, is it's going to provide a redundant path for uh, any payloads hosted on MLM in the future. I'm also providing a redundant path uh, for the European robotic arm uh, that arrived on board uh, the MLM uh, once it arrived at station. Uh, it's going to be a large robotic arm, um, all told about 11 meters in length, so about 33 feet in length. And it's going to be used uh, very similar to how the station's Canada Arm 2 arm is used, um, moving experiment payloads around or any other large elements, um, transferring payloads in and out of airlocks, transporting crew members, cosmonauts uh, who are working during spacewalks, um, and then also providing a camera platform to do external inspections. Um, so this uh, Ethernet cable going to provide a redundant path for commanding that, um, along with, again, any future payloads. So. Uh, that was a task that was originally planned during the spacewalk last week uh, and was deferred to this week after the crew uh, did successfully get all of the power cables connected, routed, and checked out. All right, and we are back now with live views. Again, you're looking right now uh, just at the Poisk module. Uh, that's Oleg Novitsky in the suit with all the red stripes on it in view. He's going to start making his way now to that Ethernet cable. Uh, meanwhile, just below him, and behind the Strela boom is EV2, that's Pyotr Dubrov. Okay, I am securing it.
Так, второй карабин научить. Так, хук. Номер 2 на ОТА. Да. Да, именно так. Пострелять перехуп. Да, транслейте вокруг Шарлотт и Пехао. And we're just about 31 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, the crew member have crew members have uh, completed installing that cable carrier uh, on a handrail, and they did that photo survey of the antennas on the Progress spacecraft. Uh, so again, they're they're going to be splitting up at this point. Um, EV1 Oleg Novitsky is going to move off to uh, get the cable reel of that Ethernet cable. I mean, he's going to be routing that down uh, to a patch panel on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, and he'll be temporarily stowing the reel um, up by the Strela arm where they were just previously. Uh, meanwhile, Dubrov's going to move back and retrieve what's known as a gap spanner bundle. He's going to be installing a number of handrails um, along the multi-purpose laboratory module um, to just help with any future translation or movement outside of the lab module um, during future spacewalks. I started my translation along Strela. And now getting our first look over the shoulder of Piotr Dubrov. Again, you're going to be able to tell that you're looking through his camera by that small 22 in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, he's continuing to move along the Strela boom right now. And one of his first major tasks is going to go and retrieve uh, the gap spanner, essentially long handrails from the airlock uh, to begin installing those in the external part of the station. I have uh, arrived at the Ethernet reel. I have uh, secured myself to uh, the handrails. Okay, you can now secure the reel and start removing it. Um, Artem, what are we going to do with the safety tethers? The safety tethers uh, we are going to leave for now if they're not going to be in the way. And after we are done working with the reel, then we're going to attempt to remove this uh, tether and use it to secure the uh, two strella. If it's not going to come off easily, then we're going to jettison it along with the reel. So is it going to be sufficient if I secure it here on the handrail? Yes. Copying. I got to the, I arrived at the grapple fixture.
I've seen a truck horse in the I have removed the safety tether. Copy. And now we're, I'm going to start uh, removing, uh, rotating and removing the wing nut. I hope it works easier than it did the previous time. I think it will be easier now. I have translated to Pahao. Copy. Further on, uh, uh, Peter, uh, go to the Hendrail 05. A copy, I confirm. I wanted to tell you right away that please do not hurry. Uh, it's going to be a longer VA. Please uh, uh, face yourselves. Copy. The wing nut uh, rotated to, to a certain position easily, and then now it got um, stuck, so I'm going to have to use a range. Okay, copy. It was expected. True. Thirty-seven minutes into today's spacewalk, again you can tell that they've already gone their separate ways. Uh, EV-1 Oleg Novitsky already arrived at that Ethernet cable. He was a few minutes early on his timeline, and so he's first uh, releasing that, which has been temporarily stowed on a handrail. He's going to remove the reel and then begin to route it towards a connector patch down on the multi-purpose laboratory module. No, I think I'm fine for now. Okay, copy. Then secure. Uh, with your red, and then you can remove the um, wire tie. Copy will do. Right now, we're not receiving a video. Now we're we're watching. We see the video again. Artem. Uh, the wing nut is uh, loose. I uh, backed it out completely. You can probably see it, but the uh, little stop wedge uh, is not. Uh, I'm not able to extract it. Do you see it? Yes, I see it. That means the latch is broken. Okay, Oleg, we're going to follow a bed. Um, we're, we're, we're going to unwire it. Uh, we're going to use the pessimistic option. We're going to unwind it and place. Yes, uh, Ethernet reel has three bolts. Uh, three bolts that need to be uh, that need a wrench. Okay, I see it. So you will need to back them out, and then. It will, will be able. To, you will be able to get to the uh, internal components. Okay. And what about? And there's nowhere to secure the cap to to cap the cap to uh, in here. Or is there some internal component that's securing it in place? Could you repeat your last thought? The cover that we are going to remove after we take those screws out. Is it attached with anything? It's going to be attached with a cable. So with that cable, copy. And when we rem remove it and open, when we secure it separately, we're going to secure it separately before we retrieve the cable. Copy.
I'll start with this cruise. And I, meanwhile, I'm trying to install the handrail and no joy. I have extended it as much as I could up to the stop point, and I still can't attach it. Piotr, let's uh, do it this way. We are not rushing you, so let's try and just install it in a different configuration. All right, I'll give it a couple of more tries. And I do need to put some force into pulling it out. Oh, yay, bingo. Got it. That's really good. So, all right, I got it. And Piotr, take a breather. No rush. All right, and I will work with the swing nuts for now. Swing nuts for now. Oleg, go ahead, Moscow. Try and pull that wing nut, like with a lot of force. I, well, that's no, it's not going to work for whatever reason. It kind of got unscrewed itself uh, almost completely. So it's probably the, do you still want me to pull it once very, with a lot of force? But if it's not going to help, then don't do anything with this lock. Well, it's kind of wobbly completely. And whether I pull on it or I don't pull on it, and Anton, have a look. Uh, is there any way I can screw it back in? No. So it's probably. You can you can just continue removing the cover because um, the um, screw. And the carvings are probably the thread is probably damaged. All right, and I thought we were going. It was all going so well, and I'll try to work with the handrail. I can do use 4320. Is that a good one? Yes. And this is Mission Control Houston. So you may have noticed an increase in the quality of our helmet cameras as we're now getting the HD views from both spacewalkers. Uh, this is a view uh, just over the helmet of EV-1, Oleg Novitsky, who's right now working to try and release that cable reel uh, with the Ethernet cable inside. You can see he's working at handrail 6008. You can see that bright orange. That's how the, the cosmonauts are able to tell um, just where each item is attached. To attach um, the wire um, with the orange wire. There is an orange wire on this cover. That's what you can use. I see that. But that's a leer. Well, we are completely going off course, like not per the original scenario. All right. I have secured the handrail. 4320. Now, Piotr, thank you. You can move and start working with handrail 4300. I am installing it. 
So you just uh, you have just unscrewed it, right? All right, it's free now, and the lock has been closed. So the trigger is closed. And meanwhile, uh, we're now looking through the helmet camera of Pyotr Dubrov EV2. Uh, he's in the process of installing uh, so what you'll hear called a couple of different things, now being called gap spanners on today's spacewalk, essentially just long handrails. Uh, there's uh, several of these uh, that are going to get installed today. Um, three that were carried over from the previous spacewalk, getting installed outside of the multipurpose laboratory module. Feeding hole, and the markings are all aligned, so everything's looking good there. And I will see if the threads are aligned. So Dubrov moving along in his timeline, able to start getting those gap spanners, those long handrails installed. Meanwhile, Novitsky still working to uh, try and right. troubleshoot uh, an issue he's having releasing the cable reel uh, from a handrail on uh, to begin routing that Ethernet cable down to the MLM. So, I have secured it with Alirka. Uh, it's not very secure, but it'll do. Okay, use a uh, Use the RET, and we are going to secure the cable with the adjustable tether. Currently, I am sec I have the large RET hook on it. How copy, Artyom? Come again. So the cover of the reel is uh, secured with the large hook of the red. Copy, thank you. Now screw out uh, screw number three and remove the cover. Copy. Artyom, 4320 has been successfully installed. I am going to now install, I will translate to the platform, and I am starting working with 4300. Copy. All right, the three bolts are free. I haven't screwed them. Copy. Oleg, what do you think? What's the slack in the cable? How many meters? Let me stow the tools and try and estimate. Okay, now the transport tether, the one that you have. Could you please attach it to the MRM handrails? <laughs> Will do. And back looking now over Pyotr Dubrov's shoulder as he's continuing to install those gap spanners, those handrails. You did hear him call down 4320 is installed. That's just the number on the handrail. No, Next up will be handrail 4300 that he'll lock in. And that'll be the third, the first one, 4005 already installed. So we can see him just attaching a, a safety tether to it. We have about, um, the slack is like about two and a half, three bay length. Okay, so now there are two connectors that are attached with a wire. Do you see them? I do. 
Meanwhile, Oleg Nevisky continuing to troubleshoot with that cable reel. Uh, they ran into some issues getting the reel off of the handrail, then looked at potentially removing the handrail to bring the, the bundle with it, which also caused a few issues. So at this point, he's removed the cover uh, from the Ethernet cable reel um, and now we'll look to uh, just remove the cable itself and leave the original reel in place. Right now we're 50 minutes, five zero minutes into today's spacewalk. The wire tie? Yes, that is right. And when you go with that wire for the last time, try and keep the wire as close to the cable and attach the other side as close to the connector as possible. Artyom, I didn't quite understand what you are saying. Okay, first of all, those connectors need to be freed from the reel, then you take those connectors and you attach them with your wire tie or with the wire, the same wire tie that is currently on the reel, whatever is more convenient for you. And then afterwards, okay, hold on, just uh, stand by. There is a wire tie on the side of the MLM. And I don't see which way it goes. Copy. In two minutes, we are probably going to go LOS for about five minutes. Well, maybe, maybe I'll figure it out before that. Before that. Okay, that's a very narrow passage here. I, um, I, I basically have to crawl through here and everything's catching on me and grabbing. All right, I got through. A little over 52 minutes into today's spacewalk. We did lose that video connectivity again. We'll be getting that back uh, in just about five minutes. Again, we should only have a couple of short gaps throughout the spacewalk today as uh, during any time we're in a spacewalk with astronauts or cosmonauts outside the station, we go into what's called Tedris Critical, uh, able to uh, get priority access on those tracking and data relay satellites. Well, it's. Uh Meanwhile, this is a look inside the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov, just outside of Moscow, talking to our spacewalking cosmonauts today, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov, their third spacewalk together. Right now, Dubrov continuing to install gap spanners or long handrails uh, on the outside, uh, two of three already in, just waiting for confirmation of the third. Uh, meanwhile, EV-1 Oleg Novitsky is still at that Ethernet cable reel, uh, trying to troubleshoot it. He removed the cover from the reel and is now trying to work to just remove the cable itself, leaving the, the reel housing in place uh, so he can start routing it down to a connection panel on the multipurpose laboratory module uh, to finish off one of the tasks from just last week. So they're telling me Unfortunately, we would not be able to fold or retract those antennas. That's a shame. But they are, we're basically done with them. They're no longer needed. So if you damage them, that's fine. Just make sure they don't damage your suits. So you can touch them, if anything, so don't worry about that, okay? Artyom, what's, uh, what do you advise about the cables? So how do you want me to secure them here? I have an idea. Why don't you take the connectors that you have freed and tied and um, make a, warp, uh, a cable bay with that wire. Uh, 
Okay. The calm is super unstable. So the idea is to just uh, by hand make the bay just the same as SMMLM1, which is on UKP. And that's how you can secure it. Oleg, Piotr. So where are we? What What was the last that you copied? Well, honestly, we haven't heard much. Okay, copy. You start saying something, and then, then there is an LOS, and that's the end of it. Artyom, let us try and do it on our own, so we'll try and form a kind of a ring, because we'll have to, because it's really hard to go through without untying this whole bundle. So maybe we can actually retract it from the reel. That is actually what I was about to suggest. Okay, that's good. Let's uh, try. Okay, the latch is closed. Everything's um, looking good here. Copy. Forty three zero zero. This handrail has been installed successfully. Copy. Uh, I'm only hand tightening the screws, though. Piotr. Yeah, go ahead. Piotr. Oleg will probably have to wait. I uh, will be standing by. by. Could you see H3, H4, H3, H4 connectors on the hill? Uh, let me see. Let, let me check. I can see the con some connectors, but I don't see what number they are. Right. You need to move to 40, to 4003. That's the handrail that you need to use. Okay, I see um, I'm on handrail 4003. Okay, and now if on the right side there is like a tiny, tiny writing in black. So it's, it's basically, no, not that connector, the next one. Uh, around, go around to the right. Well, there aren't any handrails there. No, there are no handrails. There are no sharp edges or anything uh, other. Well, use your glisser camera. Uh, you don't need to go there, but use your glisser camera. Please do not touch anything there. Copy. I will only use the MLI to hold on to. Um, if you can reach that connector with your hand, did you find it? I don't see any numbers on them. I do see that it's a connector. It's under um, antenna for numbers, numbers, X. But I don't see any number, anything that's written on the connector. And I, and it's, 
and my um, tether is too short. Okay. So get the glycer uh, get the glycer for now. Let me secure myself here. And we just passed the hour mark into today's spacewalk. Uh, right now, uh, both crew members are going to be linking up. Uh, Oleg Novitsky uh, still trying to work with that. Uh, stubborn cable bundle with the Ethernet cable that they're going to be routing down to the multi-purpose laboratory module, uh, providing a redundant path for payload commanding and also commanding to the European robotic arm. Uh, meanwhile, Pyotr Dubrov has uh, finished his task to install three gap spanners or handrails on the outside and is now going to make his way up to join up with Novitsky as they route this cable down uh, to a connection panel on the multi-purpose laboratory module. So uh, we'll, we'll get an update shortly on just where they are in the timeline. Um, they were planned to have those uh, handrails finished by about the one hour, 20 minute mark. So ahead there, uh, a little behind on the ethernet routing um, as they are still working to get the cable out of the reel itself, which they were unable to uh, remove from its temp stow location on that handrail. Okay. I have to hold on to that uh, MLI. So I'm honestly using like two or three fingers to hold on to. Right, it's a very challenging spot. So I have, this is Oleg, secured with two tethers. And the Ethernet uh, reel together with the cap are secured with wire ties, one uh, and one, and the other one is uh, on the large red hook. And am I go to translate? Yes, you are. Kyotr. So you are taking pictures of the uh, antenna uh, and the antenna for AUVK, right? And can you can you lift up the camera a little bit, just a little bit, probably, well, as far as you can reach. So if the cameras are working, that if the camera is working, that's as good as it gets. Uh, I, that's as far as I can reach. Okay, can you try and move a little bit to the left? Okay, I have retrieved. Copy, Oleg. Let's go back to platform 17 and get ready to accept the Ethernet cable from Oleg. Oleg, Piotr, if you need to take a break, please do take it. Copy. I will try and continue moving. Copy, Oleg. Sounds good. All right, well, Pyotr Dubrov just there was taking some photos of an electrical connector, and now he's gotten the go 
to make his way over to join up with Oleg Novitsky, who at this point has gotten that Ethernet cable out of the reel and is now going to start making his way down. So they're going to route this Ethernet cable to a connector patch panel. Um, they're going to be attaching some cable clamps to handrails along the way to hold it in place. Um, and they're going to eventually route this all the way down to the multipurpose laboratory module to install it again. This is an Ethernet. It's a data cable providing a redundant path for payloads, payload commanding payload data, and also for the European robotic arm uh, external to the NAUCA module. First of all, please secure the wire tied to the to 4025 handrail support. Copy. As uh, close to the body of uh, MLM, um, what is the number? It's uh, 4025. Uh, so closer to the outer side. Yes, that's right. Copy. Okay. And we are one hour, seven and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. Right now, continuing to look just over the shoulder of Russian cosmonaut Pyotr Dubrov as he works to make his way to link up uh, with Oleg Novitsky as they can uh, now continue routing and then eventually connecting uh, this Ethernet cable down to uh, the multipurpose laboratory module, the MLM. Dubrov already successfully installed three of the handrails on the outside of the of the module. It's going to assist uh, in this and any future spacewalks. Um, he'll have one additional uh, that could be installed later on on the forward-facing side of MLM uh, when the crew members go to install that and a, a passive um, platform w with attachments for future payloads. Uh, but for now, they're they're on to. Uh, finish routing this Ethernet cable. Uh, Oleg Novitsky uh, had a, some issues getting the cable reel itself off the handrail and then was unable to remove the handrail also, so they were, uh, he was directed to remove the cover, uh, got the cable out of the reel itself, and then began the routing down. Uh, this is an Ethernet cable connecting uh, the station's U.S. segment with the MLM. And they're going to be able to use this as uh, just another path for getting uh, data and commanding to payloads and also for the European robotic arm. So uh, that now on their, uh, their primary focus right now is the crew is going to work together to route that down to a patch panel. Um, they had planned to have this mostly routed by about an hour and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk, so in about 11 minutes from now. Um, so not too far behind so far. Um, and then once they get this completed, uh, they'll be moving on to uh, a couple of other cable routing tasks. Uh, the cable carrier for those has been temporarily stowed outside the airlock. That'll be coming up soon. But for now, one hour, nine and a half minutes into today's spacewalk, uh, the crew member is moving now to finish routing and then connecting this Ethernet cable. Oh, 
я напоминаю, что фалс по тягам не является заменой страховочных фалов. Так что страховочные фалы... I uh, understand that the adjustable length tether is not a replacement for the safety tether. Okay, safety tethers are attached to handrails 4025 and 4026 adjustable tethering um, length tethers are attached to 4025. Oleg, yes, go ahead. We are observing your complicated translation maneuver. You are near handrail 1500, and there are cables, there, including the Ethernet cables, and in that cable grip, you need to move it so that it is oriented toward the MLM. Okay, I understand, still talking. We had a short break. I think we were LOS for a second. Okay, we are going to have the, I'm coming into the installation on in 10 minutes. Yes, copy that. We, uh, what I'm seeing is that the valve is not attached security, securely. The only thing that's keeping it in place is the Velcro tape. Okay, copy that. Can you please go ahead and attach that? Okay, I'm thinking maybe the adjustable length tether, adjustable tether. Okay, let's do the adjustable tether first. And then, um, because this is a small valve, we don't want to waste it with a adjustable tether. I was thinking maybe the red. Yes, that could work. In any case, we're going to be putting this away into the crew lock bag. Anyway, why? Maybe we should reinstall it. Before moving away from this work zone, maybe I will put that back in place. Or do you want me to remove it completely? Peter, is my understanding correct that you are uh, talking about the cable um, that has the high frequency connectors, 17-7? Yes, it's covered with the Velcro. Okay, once we mate the connectors, they are going to stick out from the frame, and we will not be able to cover them. Okay, so you want me to put away that valve completely and take it back with me, correct? Yes, so this is my answer for now, but I will look into this and make sure. Okay.
Олег, а ты перевод... Олег, did you move the cable? Yes, I have. We copy. So far, we are moving uh, in the correct direction. Yes, this is a complicated point here for us because you will need to make sure that the cables are not twisting. Be very aware of that. Okay, we will try to avoid that. Yes, let's try. I can see your uh, the bottoms of your feet. Looks like you're nearby. Yes, I'm close. Peter. Go ahead. Since you're seeing Oleg already, you need to start preparing connectors 174 and 1741. Um, you need to prepare them for the Ethernet cables to accept that from Oleg. You will need to cut the ties. Okay, I see that from above. Uh, to make sure that the tie is out of the way, I will go ahead and remove it. Yes, we copy that. Are you receiving the video? Yes, we are. Good. So I was thinking maybe put the cable here. Can you see that? Would that be okay? The Ethernet cable goes under the power cable. Yes, that that is exactly how it's supposed to be. The one that's right to the left of you, right directly in front of you. Yes, I copy. So I will try. Oh, another question. There's another cable here outside of the handle. Should I attach it also? This is the cable that's tied to the connector, is that correct? I don't know, I can't see. Okay, in theory, you should have the connectors that you used uh, during the previous CVAs and you used wire ties to tie them. Now these are the orange ones. That's This one goes straight through the handle. If it's the orange one, then I think it is from MRM 1. No, it's near the two handrails. Okay, Oleg, don't worry about this. Don't waste your time with that. Peter. Uh, we have a recommendation for the ML MLI. If the connectors are in the way uh, and they don't allow us to cover the MLI flap, then do not put them in. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and grab them. Yes, I concur. Just to be safe, put them in the crew lock bag because if we connect those connectors, they are going to stick out, and we will have a hard time seeing that. Just in a few minutes, we're 
going to enter the orbital night. Copy that. I have attached the cover for now to keep it out of the way. Copy. It's getting warm in the sun. Yeah, it's nice. And we're a little over one hour, 20 like minutes into today's weekend. spacewalk, continuing to get views uh, from both Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov. Uh, this is a view from Dubrov's helmet camera. Right now he's just securing um, some MLI, some multi-layer insulation uh, over the connector panel. Uh, found on the Nauka module. Meanwhile, Oleg Novitsky continuing to make his way down with that Ethernet cable, securing it with uh, hand clamps on a, a couple of the handrails on the way down. And once he arrives, he'll be able to, to connect that Ethernet cable and complete that okay. task for today's so spacewalk. But uh, continuing to move along, uh, we're now just a little bit behind the timeline. We'll get a, a readout of uh, just where they are. Uh, for today's so spacewalk on. in a little bit after they finish this next on. task. Yeah. Uh, originally planned to, to last right. just under six and a half so hours so far I'm today, to uh, but already well. successfully installed uh, three gap spanners or handrails outside of the MLM, um, and then just working now to finish routing this Ethernet cable before they move on. Uh, to a number of other cable routing tasks that are just gonna continue to integrate and prepare MLM for operations on board the station. I am just taking it easy working, just preparing my little connectors. Okay, we copy that. Still, let's just take a minute to catch our breath. Yes, sure. So from the handrail 2123, we will need to go down to handrail 4046, right? Uh, um, 4006, correct. And there you already have the wire tie installed. Okay, I can see that. I copy. Then you will be moving to handrail 4005, the one that we were working with earlier today. And you will be in the area of plate 17. Then handrail 45, Pyotr has already attached the wire tie there, and we will be mating the connectors then there. Understood. Pyotr, if you have a spare minute, and also if you wish to continue, you can go to plate 17 and prepare it for stowing in the kit. That's a connector 17.3, 17.5, and 17.6. Copy. Are, are you guys getting enough uh, light? Because the video that we're seeing is very dark. I personally have enough light. Me too. Okay, copy that. So let's breathe for a minute or so, and then we can continue. Anton. I feel that I'm getting warm because of the sun, and my temperature keeps going up. Okay, I do not insist. It's up to you. Um, you know better how you feel. Okay, got it.
One hour, 25 minutes into today's spacewalk, the 50th Russian EVA in support of the International Space Station. Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov making their way towards each other. Uh, Oleg Novitsky bringing that Ethernet cable down to the patch panel on the multi-purpose laboratory module, where Pyotr Dubrov has removed the protective multi-layer insulation and is just preparing it uh, for the connection. Novitsky securing the cable along the way at uh, several handrails using wire ties and clamps uh, just to secure it, leaving enough slack for him to continue routing it to get it down to the connector panel. And then once they're done with that, uh, they'll be able to move back to the airlock and get another cable carrier where they'll be uh, then using another patch cable uh, for the Ethernet connecting uh, the multi-purpose laboratory module to the Russian service module. Um, and they'll also have two cables uh, linking the two modules television or their video systems. And then one linking uh, the Coors P antenna feeder units um, on the service module and the MLM uh, together. Again, Coors used for uh, the automated rendezvous and docking for Russian visiting spacecraft, the Progress and the Soyuz, delivering cargo and crew respectively. It's a little harder to work with these little traps here. They are tighter within the rings. It's very, very difficult to pull out a string. I, I have it in the cable holder 2123. Okay, we copy. Thank you, Oleg. Yes. The fact that uh, the strings are covered in this protective substance, it's actually worse, makes it worse. Okay, how many connectors have you done? Fully, completely, fully only one. Okay, copy that. For the lyric clips, these this strings are very stiff, covered in this protective material. So trying to pull this string through the ring is tough. So it takes a lot of effort. Can't take it off because of the ring. Copy. Надо их, наверное, резать. 
Okay, I have reached uh, handrail 4005. Okay, copy that. Now, uh, cable 4006 needs to be tied. Okay, let me find it. Now, for the slack, for the coil, do you have enough? Did you try to unspool it? I have not yet. Why? Do I need to? No, if, you, if the length is sufficient, then don't worry about it. Oh, we'll just have extra, I guess, near plate 17. Well, my apologies. Okay, I have tied it to 4006. Copy that. Now start translating towards the now. Be careful around the antennas. Difficult there. Okay, I will move. Maybe I'll give him the reel. Now, the plate is somewhere nearby, right, Peter? I just don't know whether I should move anywhere where the antenna is close. Maybe I should be able to hand it over like this. Yes, so I'm thinking we don't need both of you in that spot. The, the cover. We need to probably tie it together with the cable or uh, I don't know what would be the best way for you to do it. Okay. I have a lot of interference. What do you want me to do with the cover? Okay. We have two options for the cover. Either remove it from the cable or try to place it near the handrail where we have the slack for the Ethernet cable. Which option do you think is best? To be honest, it's difficult to answer. So we need to see the place where it's connected. Maybe I could um, unspool one loop. Okay, so let's get to that place first. Wait, actually, before we mate them, we need to decide what we're doing because if after that we won't be able to remove the lid. The, yes, you're right. I think you could put it away with the lid. Okay. Let's tie the lid. Near handrail, 4025. Okay, I have a hard time seeing. Also, I'm worried that if I try to put the lid back, it may slide off because it's not really a good attachment system here. I understand your concern, and I agree with it. Maybe we can pull the tether through the middle. Why do we need to do that? Okay. 
Okay, maybe we can find the hole in the lid. Okay, so let's get to the plate first and put the cable in. Secure it with a wire tie to handrail 4025. Then we'll take a look at the slack and decide what we do next. Okay, let's try that. Sure, let's try. I will remove the kit, the bag from the adjustable tether, and then I will try to monitor from this side as well. Yes, we copy. Wait, we are about to go LOS on S-band. And right now we're a little over one hour, 36 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, both cosmonauts have now linked up with each other at that connection panel down on the multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, you're hearing some chatters. They were figuring out how to just kind of get the uh, extra slack out of the cable as they get it over to the connection panel. Also working to figure out what we're going to do with that cover from the original Ethernet cable bundle reel. Um, that's the metal circle you can see there. Um, the initial planning for the spacewalk uh, had called for the reel to be jettisoned uh, off of the okay, Strela boom gonna, by hand by the cosmonauts. Yeah. Um, but now they're, they're figuring out what exactly to do with the reel. They'll want to make sure that they have it secured. Um, that real cover before they uh, finish all of the connections with the Ethernet cable. Um, but we are continuing to move through with this Ethernet cable routing and connection task. Uh, again, we're about one hour, 37 minutes into today's spacewalk. Both Novitsky and Dubrov now at the connection panel. Uh, and right now they're going to work to get this Ethernet cable connected figure out what to do with the cover from that uh, that cable reel and then move on to their other tasks for today's spacewalk. Leave the wire inside the rings. And once more, going into a quick handover. So the communications uh, antenna on the station transitioning from one tracking and data relay satellite to another. Uh, so we'll get that video back momentarily. And both of the crew members, Oleg Novitsky, EV-1 in the red stripes, and Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2 in the suit with the blue stripes, now uh, linked up together. They're working to do this final routing and then connecting of this Ethernet cable into the a patch panel there on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, all told, they were initially timelined to have this task completed about one hour and 45 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, and as we're one hour, 38 minutes, uh, we may still end up a couple of minutes behind, uh, but the crew did run into some issues getting that cable reel uh, with the ethernet cable inside off of its temporarily, uh, temporary stowage location. So uh, Novitsky was able to just remove the cable and the the real cover and bring the cable down along with them. Uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do uh, with that cable cover after they finish getting everything routed and connected. Again, it was initially uh, the entire real housing was set to be jettisoned, um, but uh, the large portion of it still attached and a handrail back uh, along the Russian segment, only the cover making its way all the way down uh, as we can now get a view back uh, over their shoulders. As we can see Pyotr Dubrov up there at the top of the screen, this is a view from Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera as they work to get this uh, Ethernet cable connected. Then we will have to unwind it. Let's follow the original plan. So next to the bundle, we're going to tie up that particular cover. First, 
uh, the attachment length is not going to be sufficient and it's not going to be very reliable. Well, it's going to be hanging on the cable. Yeah, it's hanging on the cable. But it's going to be on the way uh, when we're working with the panel. You see there's a, um, a handrail here, and if we uh, tie up this disc here in the area of the handrail, what is, uh, what about uh, near the handrail 3002? 3002, you're saying? What if we have to translate along that handrail? Well, we have another handrail next to it, 4320. My recommendation is not to tie it to the handrail itself, but to the side over there. Inaudible. Interference. Inaudible uh, recommendation about handrail. I think it's uh, going to take uh, too much space. Yeah, it's going to be too much space. It's going to be taking up too much space here. Okay, I'll try to do something with it. All and Peter, if it's difficult to remove the cover, then my recommendation would be to jettison it uh, along with all those flaps at the very end. Uh, the flap from uh, panel 17. Well, it can be removed. Uh, it can be brought to the. You um, can get to the connector. Right now, it's not secured. Correct. Well, it's secured. It's um, but still attached to the cable. The cable itself is secured by adjustable, so it's uh, uh, shaped like one uh, long tether. That's how this disc is secured. Okay, copy. I need to make sure I don't get all confused here.
One hour, 45 minutes into today's spacewalk. This is still a view uh, from EV-1, Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera. He's looking right at Pyotr Dubrov, EV-2, for this spacewalk. So he works to get that Ethernet cable connected to the patch panel there on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Here's a cable claim uh, on the bracket for 025. Over there on the corner, is it secured with anything? Not yet. It's secured to the bracket. Just the bracket for now. I need to add a tie down there. The one that it was secured with, the one where I put it, the one I put on 4005, I moved it closer to 4026. Well, it, it is needed there as well. Yes, I think we can remove that attachment from here and move it to the bracket where the cable is touching it and maybe tighten it in a way or route it in a way that it doesn't go along the handrail it will, so it can go along the uh, shell. I translated in between those. I squeezed by. Okay. Okay. Let me try. I can take it from you over here. You don't have to translate. I think it should be installed over here on the uh, bracket uh, because here is going to be in the way if we need to grab onto the handrail. Let me move it away. So it's going to be routed here, and it's not going to be in the way. Well, over here it will be. Okay, I think it needs a wire tie. Uh, it needs to, I think it needs to be routed further uh, to 4026. Okay, let me try it. In about a minute or a minute and a half, uh, the eclipse is going to be over. Copy. Talking about uh, cable and wire ties. I think that will place it a little bit to the side.
Can it be bent in this direction? Why not? I'm just asking. I I don't think I uh, I don't think it will be in the way. Well, don't tighten it too much so it doesn't have a very sharp bend in the cable. I think this way will work. Alex. Alex. Go ahead. А можешь, пожалуйста, на свою камеру поснимать, как Can you use your uh, camera to take the video how the uh, Cable routing path is uh, looking right now, uh, pointing to the FGB using the glitter camera. Okay. So what? So starting from where Peter is located and to the FGB. So basically, from where you are located, turn to the left, and how it's going to. The FGB, just that particular section, you don't even have to translate too far. Okay. Let me uh, reattach my short tether. Uh, Handrail 4025. So the slack is about slightly over one meter. Copy. I can translate to Oleg with this disk and hand it to him. I can give you the disk. This disk, I haven't uh, completed the uh, imagery. Peter, go ahead. Can you tie it next to maybe uh, four, uh, three, zero, zero next to uh, panel 17? Well, I can try. I'm not sure how much time it's going to take to figure out these cables. Can Alex be of help to work on panel 17? Most likely, if we get there together, we will just be in each other's way, more than helping each other. It is large. Well, we can actually leave it on the cable just floating around, it's not going to go anywhere on, from this cable. We just need to tighten up the slack. Oleg, if it's on the cable, if we leave if we leave the um, disc on the cable, we can move it direct uh, in the direction of the uh, handrail uh, toward the panel. There is nowhere to tie it down to, but it's not going to be in the way of any activity. I 
think let's, let's remove the cover. We're not going to be guessing anymore. We'll remove the cover and then uh, we'll uh, make a decision what to do with it. Okay. I put the camera away. Copy. So what did what did you decide? Uh, we're going to take the cover. Uh, you can remove it, and what we're going to do with it, we're going to think about it for now. And how do we secure it on the wire tie? Yes, secure it to the wire tie on your adjustable tether or on your red. Okay, sounds good. I'm I'm ready with the adjustable tether. Okay, let me loosen it up a little. I'm not able to translate over there. Okay, I got it. Great. I, I'm going to pull out the cable from this disc. This shape is sort of tricky. Okay, I got it. Hold on, I didn't route it the right way. Yes, I think it's the right way. Okay. I thought that's where the link, the long part is routed. Okay, we remove the disc. Okay, copy. Such an amazing item. And that's where the fine saucer legends come from. Let me finish my breath. Uh, Peter, Peter, uh, you're working the entire eclipse. Uh, do you need to catch your breath? Well, yes, I need a, a minute or two to catch my breath. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead and catch your breath. I am going to uh, tie up this uh, bundle neatly. I have a request for you. From your from your location, can you assess how the SM MLM two bundle is going to go? How the translation path is going to uh, look like the path for cable routing? 
вкратце не напомню, откуда она будет идти. Well, can you remind me uh, briefly where we're going to have to translate from the gap center? Uh, going along the circular handrail from the small diameter cone. And then you're going to get to the uh, target and then to get to the antenna that's located along uh, point one. Okay, I see it. I think we'll be able to uh, translate uh, to the handrail that Peter installed. So from the circular handrail to the handrail that Peter installed. I think the distance is not going to be that, major, that big a deal. Also behind that target there will be a circular handrail and then another a circular handrail, and then another one closer. The handrail that was installed by Peter. So we're uh, going to get behind the uh, target. In that case, you're better off uh, translating uh, head first. And get to handle for uh, 005. I think this particular path is going to be doable. So routing the cable, uh, if you're on the Estrella on the STU, uh, would that work, or do you need to translate along the handrails? No, I think it would be preferred uh, if you if the translation is along the circular handrails. Okay, uh, copy. Then we're not going to waste any time working with the Strela during the translation path, and then uh, you would be translating along the circular handrails. Well, are you working or are you catching your breath? I think he is quietly. So you you gave you gave him a go to catch his breath and he's working quietly. I am looking how we uh, can route the cables and con uh, make the connectors. I think the connector can go under the MLI flap. I am hoping we won't need to. Uh, cut a bunch of uh, slide wires to make the cable. I am ready to make connectors, uh, back up, connector back up forward to the connector on the cable. Okay, copy. Now start. You can start. Okay, copy. The contact uh, field is looking good. Okay, let me before the inspection. So everything looks good. There's no fods. Everything is fine near the socket. There's no fods. Um, the key is here near the sphere. Copy, then you can make the connectors there. There are four uh, Ethernet cables. I confirm. And we're a little over two hours, three minutes, and 45 seconds into today's spacewalk. We're right now looking through the helmet cam of Piotr Dubrov EV2 for today's operations. He's making that connection now of that now routed Ethernet cable to the patch panel there on the multi-purpose laboratory module. Just prior to this, they were able to get that cable reel cover off, and uh, the teams here on the ground still talking. Uh, the ultimate fate of that cable rail cover, uh, if it will be jettisoned or temporarily stowed on board the station itself. Uh, the original plan called for the entire cable rail to be jettisoned following uh, the successful routing and connection. Uh, so the teams uh, with that already in mind, just talking through what the next steps are going to be 
Uh, once this Ethernet cable is completed, though, uh, they'll be able to move on and recover the cable carrier with two additional bundles uh, that contain cables for connecting the TV systems between uh, the Russian service module and the MLM, and also a, a cable between uh, two antenna feeder units for the CORE's automated rendezvous system uh, between MLM and the Russian service module. So again, we're two hours and just about five minutes into today's spacewalk, waiting to get this final Ethernet cable uh, connected and then waiting on the fate of the uh, cover from the Ethernet cable reel. Uh, and then we'll get an update on just where on the timeline the crew is for the day. Uh, with it on slide wire and then without closing the MLI flap, you will go to Ukape. So and then uh, SMLM 1, SMLM 2 is where we're going to work now. Olga is going to be nearby. And once you're in place, uh, we're going to uh, route everything when we get there. I routed the cable. I'm going to uh, place it on the guy a uh, slide wire fourteen one. I'll, you can position yourself at STU as a Shrela copy. But if you want to, you can forgo you can forgo the Shrela and uh, translate to Ukape. Should I be translating along the Shrela? Yes, you can translate along the Shrela or you can go along the circular and rails on the Pechao, whichever way you find more convenient. Okay, copy. I managed to prepare one of those three connectors that are still left. Copy, Piotr, that's good. Oleg, please uh, make sure you do not touch the MMZ with your gloves. So please the, do not touch the MLI. Right. I am going to be moving in the direction of UKP. Yes, that is right. And you and Oleg can, uh, prob will probably be going to STU together.
So right now, a little over two hours and 11 minutes into today's spacewalk. Russian cosmonauts Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov continuing to move through. Uh, right now, about 20 to 30 minutes down on the timeline, as uh, right now, Pyotr Dubrov is working to finish uh, connecting that Ethernet cable, linking up the multipurpose laboratory module on the Russian segment with the U.S. segment, giving a redundant data path for uh, upcoming payloads and also control of the European robotic arm. Uh, meanwhile, looking through the helmet camera of Oleg Novitsky here as he's making his way back up to the Poisk module. Um, pretty soon he's going to be working to retrieve the next two cable bundles uh, from a cable carrier stowed right outside. And those will be uh, the next series of cables that they'll be routing. Um, and they'll include uh, cables linking the TV systems between uh, the service module and the MLM systems. Uh, another Ethernet patch cable just to complete uh, this linking of the uh, MLM to the US OS segment on the space station, and also a cable connecting uh, the core's antenna feeder units on both the Russian service module and the multipurpose laboratory module. Um, so we can see he's just about up there. Uh, he's getting a look now at Pyotr Dubrov, who's still at that patch panel on MLM. Um, so just working uh, with all the routing done to uh, get that cable connected. Artyom, do you see um, on the video on uh, the camera um, how we laid out the Ethernet cables? Yes, because it did get in the shot. Right, uh, it's 1500. Unfortunately, near the um, struts 1500, uh, the um, resolution is not as sufficient enough to see everything well. Well, it's right underneath the power cable, and there is about 10 meters between them. Copy. Thank you. And we should probably have been moved um, and brought over a holder um, for cable bundles. Well, we have a better plan for it. It's not to secure cables, unfortunately. All right, well, so be it. These are uh, on FGB on plane three, so that you can move to get, uh, not using the um, trailer, but using the Real. Copy, understood. Thank you. All right, I am on S2. Copy. And uh, um, I'm starting my movement. Stand by one, Oleg. Piotr. Just uh, wanted to ask if you wanted to secure everything there and while uh, Oleg is moving with the cable so that you don't have to drag the cables all the way. Well, maybe we can actually secure it to STU. Let's do that. Let's secure it to STU, and then Oleg is going to grab the crew lock bag. All right, let me uh, move over to STU. The reel is right next to us, and I will use the Lear. Uh, what do you think, Artyom? Well, you are... You can use S2 together. Well, maybe Piotr doesn't need to uh, go all the way. I will hand the um, cable bundle over to him. 
and that will be it will maybe I, I should just grab the crew lock bag and I'll get there sooner I think I will keep the crew lock bag all that's next to me all the time sounds good Okay. So I am going to secure it to the translation handrail. Copy. And you need to uh, remove um, one of the layers from UKP. I see that. So the cover is secured. I have secured the cover. Uh, hold on. Is that is the is it the cover that's behind me? It's to the left of you, and it should be. As it is, so the adjustable is going to the cap. To the cover. All right, I am secure to the translation handrail and uh, 33 and 32. Copy. Artem, uh, where did you advise me to put the cover? Yeah, Could you secure it um, somewhere there? I use uh, an empty um, red. And once we have the cable free, you can go to uh, plate nine and platform nine, and that co cover could be a little bit in the way. All right, let me secure it to the red, right next to the hatch. Можно на мобильное звено, если удобнее to um, the mobile ring, if it's more convenient. Copy. And we are coming up now just two hours, 20 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, both Pyotr Dubrov and Oleg Novitsky have now made their way back uh, towards the initial stowage point just outside of the poise module uh, from which they exited uh, when they began the spacewalk just two hours, 20 minutes ago. Um, they've completed routing that Ethernet cable down to the patch panel of the MLM, and so it'll stay there um, as they move their way back up to secure uh, and release two additional cable bundles. Um, these ones containing cables that are going to be linking up the, the TV systems uh, between the MLM and the Russian service module, uh, along with uh, another Ethernet patch cable uh, to complete all of the connections to, again, give that redundant Ethernet path from the U.S. segment over to the MLM for use on any future payloads and also commanding the European robotic arm 
Uh, there's also going to be a cable that's going to link antenna feeder units between the Corps P, uh, the Corps Automated Rendezvous Systems, on the Russian Zvezda service module, and on MLM. So their first step is to just release those cable bundles from their temporary spot on the cable carrier. Uh, Oleg Novitsky uh, is going to uh, stay up near the Poisk module. Um, and he's actually going to move over uh, closer to the Russian service module uh, where he's going to check the connection points uh, while Pyotr Dubrov takes the cable bundle and moves it down to the multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, once he gets all the way down, they're going to they're gonna pause and make sure they have enough slack on either end to make the necessary connections uh, between the two, and they'll be securing these cables in place. Uh, on several handrails with wire ties along the way just to just to keep things as neat and tidy as possible uh, but it is pretty difficult as you can see a lot of cables a lot of components on the outside of the space station uh, but we are about 20 minutes or so down on the timeline uh, the crew did run into an issue which you can see a metal disc right there that's the cover from the ethernet cable reel uh, that they were originally supposed to jettison shortly after uh, the final routing task. Uh, they're going to secure that cable uh, cover here uh, for the time being, and then at the end of the spacewalk, when they have a couple of other uh, multi-layer insulation covers that they were going to jettison, uh, the plan now is to also jettison that cover with those. To conference handrails. Well, the uh, Strela is very close, and I need, let me think what works best. And then from a, anyway, next to the target, you will need to move to SU anyway. So um, move behind the target and then um, get to... 4005. It should be the handrail that's named after you. Yep, and it's convenient. It's not too far to go. So, adjustable. Oh, no, that's retractable. Tether should be probably connected to the crew lock bag. Was it in any way useful on platform 17? Uh, I should say so. After I installed it, uh, it would um, get back, um, and I could use it. It was very, very convenient. I could use it, and it would come back every time pretty fast. All right, let me secure myself here and pull it up. Okay. I will, if I get myself secured here, then I wouldn't be able to switch to the cable. So I will go to STU, and I think it's going to be more difficult to um, secure myself there. Rather, um, so that's why I'm thinking that I should go uh, there from uh, the attachment fixture. And I need to pull up the cable somehow, somehow. And I need to find the uh, point to which we could secure it to. We use the same uh, rings as the ones that you secured the cable cables to. Will you be able to? And you can actually use the wire ties too that um, you used on SMMLM1. 
Oleg, could you help me out to secure the adjustable red to the aramid rings uh, and look for that wire tie? Uh, do you want the cable connected? Yes, the cable. So there is a cable holder and try and connect it there. Okay, I see. Will it do? Yes. And I have the cable secured here. I have one secured. And sterilize a little bit in the way here. I have the second secured, second one secured. Great. And the cable is secured. And here is the cable bay. Do you want me to let go of it? Yes, slowly. This is probably more convenient. Okay, I got to those circumference ring handrails, and I need to get now. I need to secure myself to them. Copy. And there should be aramid tape there. Um, not to get entangled in it, but it's not really uh, too much in the way. Uh, look at the. Could you check the cable? Whether there are any some bends, any bends or kinks there? No. It looks as if it were new. It looks really well, uh, really good. Copy. So I am now secured to that circumference handrails, and I'm starting to move. Copy. Okay. The target, passing the target. That's not the best. A little over two hours, 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, Oleg Novitsky and Piotr Dubrov continuing to work. Uh, they completed uh, a couple of their first major tasks of the day, uh, with Dubrov able to install uh, three new handrails along the Russian multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, the pair then worked together to uh, finish routing and mating an Ethernet cable uh, that had previously been uh, almost routed to the uh, MLM, uh, getting it kind of the last mile and then getting it uh, connected. Uh, they did run into a couple of issues uh, with the cable reel itself. 
Um, so Oleg Davidsky was able to take the cover off the reel and take the cable out and continue routing it. Uh, that cable reel was originally set to be jettisoned shortly after uh, the completion of uh, the cable routing, uh, but for now the cable reel itself is still installed in place in a handrail, and then the cover uh, right now is planned to be jettisoned at the end of today's spacewalk, along with uh, some other previously planned uh, multi-layer insulation covers that were set to be jettisoned by the cosmonauts. So we'll we'll see that uh, flat disk make a reappearance later on in today's spacewalk. For now, though, they're moving to uh, release and begin routing uh, two additional cable bundles uh, that have been sewed outside of the Poise module since the beginning of today's spacewalk. Uh, these will include another Ethernet patch cable that's going to link up uh, interfaces between the Russian service module and the MLM. Uh, also, two cables connecting the two modules' TV systems, and then one linking up uh, the cores. Uh, systems on both of these modules that cores use for the auto automated rendezvous and docking of visiting Russian spacecraft, including the Progress and the uh, crewed Soyuz vehicles. So the crew is still about 20 to 30 minutes, uh, give or take down on their timeline. Again, today's spacewalk originally planned to last just shy of six hours and 30 minutes. And we are two hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk so far. So. Uh, they're going to continue to work now. They're going to be going in opposite directions at first, um, with Oleg Novitsky working his way towards uh, a patch panel on the Russian service module, where he's going to wait until uh, Pyotr Dubrov has finished routing the cable down to the MLM. Uh, they'll double check the, the amount of slack on either side, make sure that they can make all of the necessary connections. And uh, before they both then meet up down at the uh, patch panel, the connection panel yeah. on the MLM the to begin installing the cables. Right. Well, Sergey, one of our Sergeys, uh, the one that that's good. Uh, since he really isn't uh, cave diving, he would be really excited to work here. That is true. Nope, and nope. It's really inconvenient that I have to translate three times to there and back and to there again. There will be like the last translation afterwards. So just bear with us a little bit longer. Piotr, can you imagine if you had failed to install that handrail? I have no idea how to uh, move the reel here unless I jump. Or well, maybe you can um, move it over the handrails. And it's caught here somewhere. I see the crew lock bag, but I don't see the cable. The cable is right behind you now. Is it catching the antenna? No, it's not. But it's caught um, under Berti a little bit. Um, so it's um, down there. Okay, let me try a different route.
Okay, I have translated to there. Got it. I got the crew lock bag. Everything's in place. And now, the cable is going over the target. I see it. Right, and got it. The cable is on... Uh, Four zero zero three handrail, copy. And Piotr, let us think about it. The cable. Picture. I think it's 403 and 404. Could you check if uh, that way you can secure the cable clamp there? I think 403 as close to the handrail would be the best. Let us tr and let me try. Uh, is it? Do you want to go even a little bit more to the right? Yes, because uh, I wanted to have it on the handrail, so as far to the right as possible until I tell you to stop. And stop. Got it? Somewhat like this. If we connect like this, then we're going to have about at least half a meter of uh, um, slack in case we need it. Copy. Then, Oleg, let's try and move the first cable clamp from uh, uh, and try and move it from from platform nine. Can you do that? I don't see anything yet. I I wanted to move this cable somewhere next to the wire ties. Maybe I could use something. Well. You can use the closest uh, cuff, so to say, and then you can uh, use the remains of the um, cable bay. And I'm installing cable clamp on uh, 4003. I'm using a hook there, too, because it will make it um, completely secure then. Great. So you didn't even need to use red, right? Correct. I'm just uh, taking it off the cable and installing it to the handrail. That's good. Oleg, and um, those stripy handrails, you can still hold on to them, but be careful. This looks good here. It's not in the way for me. It just uh, helps to add extra security. Okay, copy. <laughs> okay, so I need to remove the cable from the clamp. Okay, do you want to take a break? I'm not very tired. Just within the acceptable level. Okay. It's just that you've done some serious translation and you installed the clamp. Okay. 
I am trying to distribute the energy doesn't always work. Peter, if it is difficult, then don't worry about it. Just see how you are feeling, and then you can continue if you want. Or the cable clamp. Once you drag through and route the cable, do not clamp it. Because when Oleg will be installing the cables through the clamps, there should be additional slack. So you'll need to address that as well. Okay. Copy. Okay, I have the cable clamp. Now I need to pull the cable from the reel and then translate down, yes, to plate 9. And then we'll be working with the con with connector 9-11. Got it. Two hours, 43 okay. minutes into so today's spacewalk. So right now, uh, both Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov working to uh, extend bundle. this uh, cable bundle. Um, cable right now, Oleg Novitsky is moving towards a panel on the Russian service module, panel number nine, um, where he's going to check and make sure that he has enough slack uh, to connect the ends of his cables. And meanwhile, Pyotr Dubrov making his way down to uh, the multi-purpose laboratory module, the MLM. We just watched him install a, a cable clamp on one of the handrails, 4003, securing uh, the cable bundle in place. And so then after they're able to check the slack on either side, um, they will then move to uh, start connecting this cable um, on the uh, the service module side and on the MLM side. Okay, got it. Please r remind me first. We made. Ha pe pe Wait. No. We first we made 17-1, 17-2. Those are the high frequency one. Now from the MLM kit, the sequence of installation is not that important, but we need 356, and then 31 needs to be stowed. Copy. So my adjustable tether is attached to 17.5 which is probably not ideal because because I will need to spread it out and coil it. Yes, use a different one. That's correct. Okay, copy that. I have the cable retrieved from the bag. Got it, Oleg. Now you need to translate to plate nine. You should have enough cable length. Okay. No, this is um, actually a question. Oh, question. Okay. I don't see plate nine. Platform nine. I was not sure which way will be best to route the cable. Further away from me or closer to me? I understand. I would say along the circular handrails and do not put the cable behind the handrail. So 
between me and the uh, circular handrails, correct? Along the, the handrails, yes, correct. Okay, I think this is more convenient. I have taken off the bags, so one is attached to me using the adjustable tether. Let me see what I have here, ready to mate. Yes, we copy that. When you're ready, you can proceed. Yes, I don't know if I should do another attachment point here or one is enough with this. Well, I think you should add add RET if possible. If it is not possible, then whatever you have is sufficient. Yes, I have a free RET. Okay, in about seven to six minutes, we are going into the night. Got it? Okay, on the cable, we have the lids attached, looking at the plates, on the plate, they are attached with the tether as well, yay. This makes things much easier. Yes, so we were expecting the high frequency ones to be attached. Looks good. Starting with connector 177, starting to m mate that. Did you say 17.7? Yes, 17.7, no debris. Copy. Oleg, let's wait for Peter's report. Okay. In that case, I will uh, be um, get a better position for myself. Yes, make yourself comfortable near plate 9. Okay, I have installed the lamp. Okay, then go to 1722 and work. 172, we see the um, Okay, I have opened one part of the ML MLI, labeled 1910. Yes, we copy that. Are you seeing the bracket? Yeah, I think it's here. <laughs> yes, under this small one to the side, closer to you. Yes, I see that. Four connectors. Okay, Peter. Did you mate 1722? 
yes, but I am looking at the MLI, MLI flip, uh, flap, and it's in the way. I can't, I seem to not be able to close it. Try to rotate it a little bit. Yes, I'll try to do that. Oleg, okay, which ones should I take, Pewter or me or what? The slack will come from Pewter, okay, after you connect to plate 9 and attach the coil and then have them near handrail 2233, you will retrieve the cable clamps and pull the slack through that. Okay. I think I understood. Okay, Oleg. There are four connectors reading the numbers of the connectors. Are you seeing the decals? Not at this time. Not seeing where it can be. Okay. Anton, Artyom, can you tell me if we have, if you are receiving the video? So I see that it is signed. So which, what number do we need? Um, 9-11 is what we need. 9-11. The hook closed. We have one millimeter gap here. I think because of the tape that's attached to the lock, it's fairly thick. Okay, copy. Peter. It is too dark right now. We're going to be in total eclipse in about one minute. Peter, Oleg, don't hesitate to turn on Orlan lights when it's dark. We do have enough battery life. Okay. Right now we have good visibility. Maybe just for the camera? Yes, because from the camera we are seeing practically nothing. Okay, our connector HFP 9-11. Okay, so the markings on the cable, the decals, can you see that? And so two hours, 55 minutes into today's spacewalk. Right now, both uh, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov working to uh, connect the cables in bundle number two. Uh, this one is focused on that uh, connection between the, the core's automated rendezvous system between the MLM and the Russian service module. Um, by tying these together, this is going to enable both to be used um, during any future visiting vehicle operations over on the Russian yes. segment, with both the Russian Soyuz and the Progress. Uh, they'll be able to use the, the core's automated system on board the, the service module up until they get to a point called station keeping. That's typically when uh, the spacecraft is lined up uh, just in front of its final docking port be before it begins final approach. Uh, and then control would be handed over to the, the cores on the, the MLM.
time the Russian multi-purpose laboratory module. Uh, this has done the same uh, already with other docking ports uh, like uh, the MRM-1 um, and previously at the uh, the docking compartment number one piers, which was uh, detached and deorbited prior to MLM's arrival. Um, so this will be an important connection to, to use for future vehicles as MLM becomes a docking port uh, for additional Russian uh, progress and Soyuz spacecraft down the line. And then connect the cable. If you can read what the cable says, that's great. If you cannot, then that's okay as well. Okay. I can see all four connectors. I can see the signs on them. All right, FPN 999, then FPN 9-10, then have P 9-11, and then 9-12. Okay, so 9-11, go ahead and disconnect that. Disconnecting, copy. Okay, this connector that you will be mating, you will be mating to connector 911 with the SM MLM 2 with that bag. Okay, copy that. We'll do that. Uh, Piotr. I confirm connecting. The connector. Connector 17, MLM FP 17. It's all nice and tight. Okay, copy that now. Are you putting away the cable, uh, routing the cable, or what? Well, I am preparing the cable clamp right now. Yes. By the way, it didn't really work out that well here. It was um, installed very smooth, but then I think it coiled around the target. I can see that right now. We copy. That's okay. You'll have other opportunities. Okay. So right now, I cannot disconnect the high pair 9-11 because the string got caught in the spring-loaded ring. Can I take this off, or is it, okay? is, is it not okay, or is it okay? Okay, wait. If you're talking about the spring-loaded clamp, then yes. Or yes, that's what I'm talking about, the clamp only for now. Okay, yes, you can do that. Copy. That should be sufficient, thank you. I will uh, remove the cap and put this here. Okay, copy. Nine twelve has been installed. The clamp is installed. The connector never got disconnected. Okay, we copy. I demated the connector F H F P nine dash eleven, trying to find the markings on the cable. If it did exist at some point, I cannot see it. The cables are very thin. I cannot see the decals, the labeling. Mission Control Moscow, this is ISS. Yes, go ahead. Artyom, I uh, 
disconnected the connectors. I don't see any labels on it. You mean on the cable? Correct. I don't see any markings on the cable. Okay, we copy that. This is an old connector. It needs to be connected to connector 9-11 uh, for the SM bag. Okay, you mean the one I have right now? Yes, the bag that you have currently. There are two connectors, 1, 2-2, two -two, and then 9-11. Got it. Okay. Ben. 2-2, 2-2, should be still on the cable coil. Yes, it is on the coil. And then the other one, the adjustable one. And right now we're a little over three hours and two minutes into today's spacewalk. Novitsky and Dubrov still continuing to work with uh, the SMMLM2 cable bundle. That's the service module in the multi-purpose laboratory module number two bundle. Uh, they're working on getting this uh, cable connected that's going to tie together the, the core's automated rendezvous and docking systems on both modules uh, for the handoff that will occur during future visiting vehicle arrivals and departures um, to docking on the MLM or the uh, upcoming Russian node module that will be installed at the end of the MLM. A number? There is a number, 103.18. 1452, then there is 15KS31 8531A-40, correct. Is that the one? Yes, that's the one. Go ahead and make that. Okay, copy that, putting that in work. Connecting it to the one that I took off the plate. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so I have it. Um, you made it mostly, but there is a spring that's still holding it in place. Okay, we copy that. Oleg, we would recommend that you either take a break to rest now or tie this connector in place and tie the coil to the plate and cover all the connectors and tie the coil so handrail 2333. Now, what do you prefer? Do you want to take a break now or later? Honestly, I can't. I can't tell. Both options are fine, but I guess let me let let me finish here. Okay, copy that. So let's connect this to the valve to the in the. A cover with the ML MLI flap. Okay, got it. It's just I'm not finding what to connect it with. Hello. 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 I hang up, Shay.
Артем, я слышу. Артем. А я имею клемп 2108. Может быть, я могу использовать это, чтобы как-то положить это под МЛИ. Мы нужно клемп для To attach behind the target. Oh, you mean the wire tie? Yes, I'm sorry, I meant the wire tie. Okay. So that's just the plate, and that's all there is to it. Okay. Is there any room to reach any curve there? Wait. Do, I'm sorry, what? Is there a Lurka clamp somewhere? Uh, or maybe just put it under the MLA, MLI flap and it will hold it in place by itself? Okay. Let me try. I have some available Lurka clamps. Okay, so it is nearby, close to the EVA tools. We got wire ties, so maybe we can wrap it up here. Okay, it's uh, whatever you say. Okay, I can try to install it covered with MLI. If it doesn't work, then I'll have to think about what else I can do. Okay, understood. I think you won't be able to secure it there in a reliable way. At least what I've done is cover the Velcro flap. Okay. Oleg. I think it's staying in place for now. We copy at the end of the EVA. Okay. So on this reel, on this coil, I will need to start moving towards the other and then attach the cable, right? No, the coil that you have with connector 2-2, you need to attach it to handrail 2333. Okay. And this is Mission Control Houston. Right now we are three hours, nine minutes, 23 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk. Uh, our Russian cosmonauts doing the spacewalk today. Uh, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov continuing to work to uh, mate and then secure this cable, uh, tying together the CORS automated rendezvous systems between the Russian service module and the Russian multi-purpose laboratory module. Um, as they continue that work, we did want to give you one quick update uh, on uh, status that we had talked about at the beginning of today's broadcast. Uh, the, the crew on board the station was awoken last night by a smoke detector alarm that happened right before 10 p.m. Eastern time, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, the alarm lasted for about a minute and then cleared uh, with the crew waking up and then immediately taking some atmospheric uh, readings inside the cabin, uh, inside the Russian service module. Uh, they had no indication of a source, but did report a burnt plastic or electronics type smell uh, in the Zvezda service module with a uh, faint smell also uh, reported uh, all the way over in the uh, US node one module, which is directly connected to the Russian segment. Uh, again, no source was found or identified. The crew uh, investigated and observed for just over an hour. Um, and also activated an air filter, uh, which helped the smell to subside, uh, but not completely disappear. Uh, the crew did report uh, that it was still there when they awoke this morning. 
Uh, but the crew went back to sleep after uh, observing and activating that air filter. Um, and the, the, uh, the smell was not any impact to uh, getting ready for uh, today's spacewalk, which we are again a little over three hours into. Um, so no changes to the plan uh, for the rest of the crew either. No, yet. No, not yet, Artem. This is a handrail on along a uh, plane three to a uh, handrail is running parallel to each other. If you're going to look in the direction of the assembly compartment, it's going to be on the right side. Yes, I'm not. I haven't accessed the circular handrails, so it's uh, difficult to find. I can't tell you uh, if I have found it yet or not. So I'm going to. I am going to try one approach. I'm going to secure myself to these rings. It's like it, it probably sounds like I'm cutting the branch I'm sitting on, but it looks like that's what I'm going to have to do. There are tons of branches here. Okay. Okay, Peter, uh, go ahead. Uh, just be very careful. Yes, I have to be uh, very slow and deliberate here. So you're holding on with the left, Oleg, you're holding on with your left hand to the handrail in question. Am I? I am trying to move away from it. Well, this is not what you should be doing. This is the handrail 2333, long plane 3. Oh, you see, happiness is uh, always somewhere close. If you have the po an opportunity, okay, the cable, either uh, pull the cable into the cable clamp, or if the bundle is uh, tied up in a way that you cannot route the cable into the cable clamp, then uh, tie it up to the handrail nearby. Well, I'm thinking that I'll be able to route it in there. This circular handrail has orange cables routed nearby. Maybe I can route it over there. Or do you think I shouldn't try it? Well, maybe they're not in those handcuff shapes. Uh, cable holders because they're too uh, small of a diameter. Maybe you shouldn't be uh, uh, touching it. Okay, copy. And copy all. Do not. I do not touch those. Okay, copy. Do not touch. Программа минимум выполнена. 
I just have to cut this one, and then the minimum uh, required list of items is complete. And then we'll need, we can pull it out and make the connectors. But then we'll have to uh, route them somehow. And this is Mission Control Houston. Another quick handover period, so we'll get that live video communication back with the space station momentarily. Again, these are going to happen periodically throughout the uh, spacewalk today, uh, but as it is a spacewalk, we're in what's called Tetris critical mode. Um, so we have essentially a, a top priority on the tracking and data relay satellites that we use to communicate with the International Space Station. Um, just so we have as much constant video and audio communication with the crew members while they're outside. Uh, so we'll get that back momentarily. Uh, we are three hours.